Hello everyone, we are going to try something brand new. So it looks like Facebook now has it where I can go live on my public page from my desktop. <laughs> so we're going to try a new microphone and everything and just to see how things work. I'm Corinne Crabtree from Fit and Fat. Dot com. A lot of you know me as the PNP Tribe Queen. I lost 100 pounds, oh gosh, 12 years ago. Been leading other women for over 10 years on to do the same. And so, what I do is each week I come live, except for last week, because I was leading a bunch of the challengers through a weight loss week, and then they all became members. So, I usually come live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. We talk about something that's going to help you with weight loss. And today we are going to talk about small steps. Um, I'll go over a little bit about my story in just a second and why small steps are so important. If you guys want to um, ask some questions, one of the things that um, I can do now is actually, I think I can type over here. I can, oh wow, it's just cool. So we have all kinds of new exciting equipment <laughs> to test out. So if there is something weird going on with it, just let me know in the comments and uh, I will, I'll try to fix it or we'll figure it out along the way. Uh, Karen Langley says, you need a diaper changing table on the wall behind you. It practically is a diaper changing table. That's all the shit that we talk about on the podcast. So for those of you who are watching the live, if you're wondering, what are all these notes behind me? This is where the magic happens, y'all. <laughs> so this is Kathy and I, we write on a whiteboard and we come up with everything that we need to talk to you guys about. Okay, so let's talk about the small steps and why that's so important. When I first started losing weight, so I was 250, I had always been overweight, I'd always been over, uh, like obese, and I think the majority of the time when I would, well, I know this for sure, the majority of the time when I would start a diet, I would start it from a place of thinking about, one, how far I had to go, and like every step that it was going to require to get there. And when I would do that, it would take me out of like, it just, it took me out of, whoops, it took me out of getting everything done that I needed to do for that day. And I would really discount how important the littlest of the things that needed to get done were going to be in order for me to be able to lose my weight. And I think that is a common phenomenon. I mean, like right now I'm going, oh my gosh, we got so many newbies right now. And their biggest fear is that, well, what creates the fear is they start thinking about all the things that they have to do. And when you think about all the things that you have to do, it's really easy to fall straight into overwhelm. And then when you fall into overwhelm, you're doing nothing. You start convincing yourself that if you can't do it all, you might as well do nothing. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Your brain just goes into all the reasons why right now is the most terrible time in the world to get started. Or your brain is so convinced that because you can't do everything, you might as well just do jack shit. Y'all, it's very normal to think those things. It's very common to think those things. Your job is not to suddenly not think those things. That is the biggest misconception when it comes to our pessimistic thinking about change. Here's the deal. We all got habits. Every single habit that you have that you need to change, it's there for a good reason. If you're overeating, it's there for a good, good reason. A lot of us, we overeat to generate happiness, to generate relief and stuff. We're doing it from a good place. We may hate that we're doing it, and it may have a fucking terrible payoff for us in the end, but it starts from a place of what you need. What I try to teach my people is if you need relief and you need rest or you need happiness, whatever it is, you need to figure out how to generate that first through thought so that you can get to the actions that create those genuine feelings. The problem with overeating and getting caught up in the idea that you have to fix it all, like all the small steps aren't going to matter and stuff, is that you block yourself from ever getting to the things that create the long-term feelings you're seeking. You know, if, if you want to have relief and peace, a rest, happiness and stuff, you have to start thinking, okay, those are things I need right now. I'm just supplying it with food. 
There are other ways to supply it. It's my job to figure the solution out. My job isn't to think that I can't have it or whatever. You're getting it. You just want to get it effectively. That's the only thing. So a lot of times what I do is I try to get people to understand like for many of you who are wanting to feel like a break or who are wanting to feel um, encouraged, relief, uh, some happiness, just not feel terrible, just get to neutral. This would be fine for me and you're doing it with food. A lot of times it really is identifying a lot of small things that you can do for yourself during the day that lead to weight loss, that done over time, have huge payoffs and stuff. And then when you accomplish those things, guess what? You do start feeling a lot of that stuff. You do start seeing that you can do it. You do start feeling a little more motivated. You start crawling out of the hole of hopelessness, things like that. So I think it's really important to identify where you're at right now in your weight loss journey. For a lot of you, you're either just beginning with me. It's a bunch of you who are just beginning with me. Some of you are banging it out of the park already. Some of you are still having a hard time. This is why I tell you guys, just paying somebody money online, including myself, is not the answer. Getting in there and doing the work when your brain is screaming, this feels like ass, that's what you have to do. Like, you're never going to pay somebody for a pill, a shake, a program, a plan, a course, or whatever, and that do the work, and all of a sudden your life is fixed. Never happens. Ever. It starts with, all right, I'm ready, and I'm going to call myself on my bullshit excuses, and when I don't feel like doing it, I'm guess what? Today's the day I don't get to feel like doing it. Today's the day that I just do some stuff. But for when you're first starting and you're identifying where you're at, whether or not you just, like I'm your coach on the podcast or I'm your coach on the lives or I'm your coach in tribe, it is where am I at and what are the small steps that are going to get me through today? Like for a lot of you, I think you have to like wake up each day and identify today, here's what I'm going to accomplish in my weight loss. You know, some days, some of you guys are going to do a lot of the things. Some days you're going to wake up and be like, if I can get my water done today and I can just make sure that I don't stop at McDonald's at 5 o'clock, it will be a banner day. Guys, give yourself the gift of a plan, thinking about what you want, crafting a few small steps, and then doing it. Weight loss is built on the back of the small steps. It's a, every tiny decision you make. It is not doing it all. Like if you're one of my girls and you're, you know, watching modules this week and stuff, so many of you are like, well, I don't have my book yet. Or, well, you know, I don't, I don't really have time to watch all the videos. It's like, well, have you watched one yet? Well, no, not really because I don't have time to watch five of them. Like, fuck that. Watch one. I called somebody out today on like, you got time to sit here on the Facebook group and talk about how much time you don't have is the amount of time you could have been in the course watching one video. But we talk ourselves out of that stuff, guys. And what we do when we get overwhelmed is we forget our small steps. We go to, if I can't do it all, I'm not going to do any of it. Can't do it perfect. Let me just blow it all up. And it doesn't work. So really getting in there and identifying your small steps. What are the small steps that are right for you? And then listen, and listen hard. Because the second, the majority of you will do this. The second you identify the small steps, the first thing your brain is going to say is, well, that's not good enough. Do you see her over there? She's doing this stuff. Why are you not doing that? Your husband says you need to do all this stuff. Well, you're not good enough. This will never work. That has nothing to do with it actually being able to work. It has nothing to do with anything other than your brain is a great debater. That's it. Your brain is just going to what it always goes to that gets you to the easy button. But your, your brain knows that feeling relief that you followed your plan is a lot harder than stopping at McDonald's at 5 o'clock and getting a Big Mac. Like, 
let me just keep just saying some loud shitty crap to you because we'll go to McDonald's at five o'clock and we'll feel awesome. That'll be better. Because yeah, you could get relief and go into bed knowing that you all day long didn't answer the McDonald's call. All day long, you didn't answer all the negative self-talk about yourself. All day long, you allowed yourself to be like, you know what, it's, I get that I'm comparing myself, but that's not helpful. That's not helpful. The thing about it is that your brain is always going to tell you all the things that sound shitty. That is just the way we are all wired. If you don't want to be wired that way, good luck. You're going to need like a brain transplant. <laughs> You're going to, have to find baby Jesus in the golden cradle and he's going to have to give you the Christmas miracle because your brain is not going to change. Your job literally is to learn how to know that those thoughts are coming, understand that just because you have them doesn't mean you're broke or it doesn't mean you must follow them. Your job is to become the better debater. Your job is to become the boss of the thoughts. Your job is to be like, I'm the manager here. I get you want to bitch and moan that you actually have to come into work today, but guess what? We're coming into work today. It's, your brain is like the teenagers at the fast food restaurant working and complaining that their life's hard. It's like you have to be the boss of your brain and be like, our life is not hard. There are problems that we are designed as, it's like, we have a brain, it's designed to solve them. Your job is to tell your brain, hey, you can solve this if you'll get out of your own fucking way for a hot second. And that, guys, is like the secret to it all. It is figuring out what are the small steps that you need to do today. I tell people all the time when you're first starting, keep it in the minutia. Keep to today. Don't think about what you, you know, what would look perfect and like if, well, if I sent this to Corinne, she'd, she'd just think this is the best thing ever. I don't care about all that. What I care about is you chalking up small wins. You're going to have checks in the lose column too. That's normal. But your job is to take them out of the lose column and get them to the win column by going over there, assessing, deciding what's the, what is that problem that needs to be solved? Not... Oh my God, look, I've got a check in my lose column. I must be an idiot. Let's just quit everything. So if y'all have any questions, now's the time to ask. Go ahead and start filling it up. I, I think it's just really important, guys, for you guys to really understand this concept because I am telling you, small steps is where it's at. Without the small steps, guys, you, you're not going to get anywhere. And if you ask anybody who's lost weight, they all started with making small changes. You know, some people did like buy a program and whatever, but some small things had to happen every single day. Like you have to do a food prep sometimes on a Sunday. Not every, and, and let me just say, when I say you have to do a food prep, don't like have a heart attack like Fred Sanford. It's about like making a plan that you know you could execute. I told one girl this week, I said, if your food prep needs to be, you wrote on your piece of paper Subway every day at lunch because you know now what you're going to get at Subway and it doesn't include tagging a couple extra cookies onto the end and stuff like that, then there's your food prep. Food prep just means I thought ahead. I have my own back. That's what the small steps is about. Waking up each day and saying, I've got my back today. And here's exactly how I'm going to have it. When I go to bed tonight, I want to be able to, like, just say, check off these three things. I want to be able, I want to know that I went to bed and I drank all my water today. I want to know I went to bed today and took my vitamins, went for a 20-minute walk. Whatever it is that floats your boat that gets you healthier, I promise you, you add them things up. That's where I started. That's why I know, I know it works. You know, I started off with a 15-minute walk. I did not change my food. I did not have a food prep. I did not have a plan. I didn't have anything. I stayed in my 24-hour lane. I did that for 18 fucking months and lost 100 pounds. It works. I never had a coach. I never had a trainer. I didn't have those things. What I had was a maniacal focus to get in the moment each day and not allow myself to compare myself to where I think I should be 
or to, you know, there were several times I'd lost like 50 and 75 pounds and couldn't keep it off because I never kept my focus. I never did the things that I knew I could do every single day for the rest of my life. It was the only thing I thought about, and I got crazy good at it. And the only way I got crazy good at it was because I woke up every day doing that. Uh, Sandra says, I couldn't figure out how to watch the broadcast. Hopefully, you've already figured it out because it's you're in here. <laughs> uh, can you give some examples of the small steps other than water? Scarlet. Yes, uh, this is one of my tribe newbies. Welcome, Scarlett. So I think one of the biggest ones for you guys is journal every day. That's a small step. Like before you even redo the food that you're eating, getting very used to having your back of assessing your day. Like this is what I ate. This is, use the journal. Guys, if you haven't gotten your journals yet, all you have to do is go on to module one, unit one, go to the 60-day journal, print off just a few sheets. They are coming. I swear to God, they're coming. <laughs> My printer told me today that his printer broke. I'm like, this is what cracks me up. He's once run out of paper, and I was like, that's like Taco Bell saying they ain't got no tacos. How, do you, how does a printer run out of printer, a paper? Then the next thing is now the, print, the machine's broken. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like stone tablets and chisels? <laughs> like, come on, it's 2017. We've got to level up our game printer. Maybe he needs a coach. <laughs> so I would make sure you're journaling every single day. I would go ahead and get into the habit of writing. That is the single best habit any new person can start. Now, let me tell you why journaling is probably the most important, next to water. Water is always number one. <clears throat> the reason why the journal is so important is because it requires so much of you. It requires you to look at your dirty diapers. Because your food ain't going to be perfect. You're going to have a, it, it, almost every newbie has the same fears, like, I don't really know what I should be eating. Hey, guess what? Journal anyway. It teaches you to do things anyway. It teaches you to carve out time every single day to assess. It requires you to think about your tomorrow. It, like, is the foundation of every good habit we have. It requires you to think, plan, assess. It requires you to work through your bullshit excuses because most people don't want to journal because they don't like what they see. And it is the one thing that gives you the most amount of information about what needs to change. Without it, it's like pissing in the dark. You're going to miss the toilet. Turn the light on. Your journal is your light. That's what you want to do. So I would say journaling would be like, I would have water, I would have journaling. I think for those, now I have a lot of clients that have well over 100 pounds to lose that walking is not easy for them, but if you can walk, I think personally scheduling 10 to 15 minutes every day where you walk and you, you put your self-development on your phone. You either put on my podcast, you put on your videos that you're supposed to be watching. You can do like um, uh, audio books. I keep so much stuff on my phone. There is not, I could be three minutes on a toilet and plug in some self-development and learn something. In fact, this whole speech that I just gave you was all because I was listening to a book yesterday and I was like, this is the shit I need to talk about. I went back and re-listened to that portion today just to be ready to talk about it. So I was like, so good. Before you all wonder, what book are you reading? It is 100 Ways to Motivate Yourself by Stephen Chandler. It is excellent. It's so good. In fact, all his books are good. I'm going to tell you right now, there is not a Stephen Chandler book that I have not read that I have just been flabbergasted by. But it is, um, they're broken up into small chunks. So if you're listening to them on your phone, they're like 100 chapters and they're two to four minutes long. They're perfect. They are perfect small chunks of development. So I would, it, you know, it, I just think it's just great. Uh, so journaling and water, I think, like getting in the habit of doing those little 10-minute walks because you can double time some of your self-improvement. So you can be like talking and learning. And, you know, don't just listen to bullshit. Or, you know, like I love Joel Osteen. I swear Joel Osteen's God message falls very in line with how I just teach about how you think and stuff. He's got a podcast, too, where you can just listen to little 10-minute segments of his podcast. I think that's another key. I would say, you know, scheduling sleep for a lot of you who chronically undersleep because you don't plan your day, just say, you know what? If I don't get it done, I don't get it done. But I tell you what will get done, my sleep. 
you will be amazed at how you will start getting everything done in a more compressed amount of time. I promise you. The more you guys constrain your time down, the more you will eventually get done. Probably one of the other ones, I think like some vitamins, if you are not eating healthy, guys, if you don't eat healthy, you probably need to start some vitamins until you can level up your food. Um, some of you may just be adding fruit to your day. You know, when, if you're eating a very shit-tastic diet, it might be, well, I'm going to, you know, one habit I am going to form is I will have at least a piece of fruit today. I know a lot of people that just don't eat any fresh food at all. So one of your small steps could be like, you know what, this week, every day, I will eat something fresh. Even if the rest of my diet's who nanny, I will at least eat something fresh today. Those things, guys, literally build upon each other. They compound effect themselves which just means that as you do these little things, you start feeling a little better. Your motivation starts increasing. You're like, I can do it. Bone starts strengthening. You physically start feeling better. And mentally, you start noticing that you're showing up for yourself in certain ways. So then you're going to want to show up for yourself even more. It just, small steps just establish an amazing habit, guys. Um, let's see. Ooh, you're talking to me. <laughs> uh, Erica said her small step right now is just no second helpings at dinner. I think that's a great one. I think for a lot of people just saying, you know what? I'm not even prepared to change my food, but what I am prepared to do is what's on this plate. That's the end of that story. No going back. No nibble. I think for a lot of you, like here's a small step. You no longer grab ass food. For all of my newbies, you're not familiar with grab assing near as much as a lot of my, my elder tribe members because I talk about the grab ass all the time. <laughs> and let me just explain what grab ass is for all the new people. We're, let's all pretend we're married, right? We're in a committed relationship. We love our man so much. But we also happen to love guys that are ripped. This is me. I love a guy that is tanned, ripped, has tattoos like he was just... Mm, all up and down them rippling arms and bald, all right? So he's walking down the street in his tight pants and, like, a cut-off shirt, and you can see all the tats. Well, I just decide, well, I'm just going to go over and I'm just going to grab on his butt just a little bit. And I'll probably just rub a bicep or two. Maybe I'll kiss him, but that's it. That's all I'm going to do because I'm in this committed relationship. Like, I love my husband, but, you know, when that guy walks by, I got to have that. Like, I have to have some. That is you and chocolate cake. That is you and cold french fries on the plate. That's you and the spare chicken nugget in the car. That is all of that. You're grab ass and food. You're like, well, I'm just going to eat that little bit of macaroni my kid didn't eat because it's really good. Or I'm just going to have a small little taste of this. That's grab ass and. It's cheating on yourself. Just like you wouldn't go and just grab the ass of a rank stranger and not call that cheating. If your husband just said, I just need to, you know, tweak a nip every now and then, you'd die. You'd be like, hell no, we don't do that. You don't either with food. It is the same thing. You have a relationship with you. Do not cheat on yourself. If you want mac and cheese, put it on your plan for the next day. Have mac and cheese. Enjoy mac and cheese. Make that for reals, but don't sit there and pretend like that shit doesn't hurt. If our husbands were out quickly kissing every um, hot blonde that walked by, we would not love it. And our hips don't like it when we're kissing on every hot french fry that happens to walk by our mouth either. We have to, you have to start thinking about stuff in those terms. So a small habit can just be like, I don't grab ass food anymore. Like, I can plan, I can plan whatever I want, but what I'm not going to do is do the grab ass. If, uh, if Leslie Kenny is on here, <laughs> she's going to love it. She's always, she's hilarious about my grab ass story. Can you give a brief description of your program in working with you? Michelle, if you um, go to PNP tribe.com all the information is over there i'm closed we will not be reopened until the first of the year but you can get on the wait list for the next opening if you would like um but at pnp tribe.com has everything you're going to want if you are very new to me i would actually suggest you go to pnp411.com and get my free course 
Uh, you'll get a workbook. You'll get four videos. A lot of people have lost a lot of weight with that free course. I get people all the time emailing me saying, girl, this free course, I've lost like 10, 15 pounds. A lot of people use that free course until I open again. And then they come in and they're like, ready to hit it hard. A lot of these girls on here all started with the free course. If you had the free course, y'all speak up so that Michelle knows it's some quality. Uh, food prep can be one meal per day for the work week. Yep. Uh, Kit, do you ever have small fails yourself? And what do you do after fail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always crack up at this. Uh, first of all, I can understand why people ask me that because Facebook always makes everyone who is in fitness or weight loss or whatever just be like, it's all about the perfect day. If you're in my tribe, you know it's not all about the perfect day because a lot of times I talk about my trials and tribulations over there. Everything that I roll out to them, I test on myself because it always started with a problem I was having myself and I wanted to come up with a solution for it. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're, we're getting ready to do our over drinking program. I think it, y'all, it's going to, our program is going to be about how do you like drink on schedule and include it as your joy and exception. And it's not just all of a sudden I'm grab assing all the time, that kind of shit. But anyway, it's like, I think we're doing it in January. It's on the calendar, but it's like in January. But it started with because I was like, I kept wanting to have wine every night. And let me just tell you, my ass likes to grow when it's watered by Merlot. So I had to break that, right? And so I, I do. And, and it's common. I mean, I think it's, I probably fuck up once every at least a week. <laughs> I mean, in various ways, I still eat past satisfied very often. I catch myself sometimes eating while I'm working. Then the next day I'm writing about it like, yeah, no wonder, you know, you were eating while you were working. That's one you got to work on. Same thing with like, um, you know, every now and then, like I will plan, like my husband and I, we will plan to go out and have our date night and I will end up eating nachos and I'm not hungry because I've had my wine. You know, and it's just an all, it, but here's the thing. It's not about do you fail. It is about what do you do when you fail. We are, all, that's the way life is. A lot of us set ourselves up for um, long-term dissatisfaction in ourselves when we are expecting that we're going to learn something. And then once we've learned it, that's the end. It's like, well, I've lost a hundred pounds, so... I should never overeat again. I should never want, you know, to have wine again. I should never want nachos again. Like that doesn't, that never happens. And I think the difference is, is when you understand that wants and desires may always be there, but you learn how to deal with wants and desires and it not be miserable for you. You also learn how to, when you fuck things up, that it's not the end of the world. You it's just a problem that needs a solution. It's not the end of the world problem. Most of us make a mistake mean, oh my God, here it is. I'm going to gain my weight back. Like we go to down this line of thinking that gets us off our game versus like I make a mistake and I just think this is just something I need to think about. This is just something I need to like evaluate and move on from just an opportunity to, to try to fix something else or it's a signal that something deeper is wrong you know like I can always tell when like this last week when we were opening and stuff I worked a crazy amount of hours crazy amount of hours and I ended up not doing my we do these things called thought down basically it's like a journal okay so let's just say for the week I didn't journal by the end of the week I was fried arguing with my husband all kinds of stuff wanting to go have wine that was this, and, and I did have wine on Sunday, and that was, and it was unplanned. That was the signal to me that there needed to be some examination, and I looked back at my week, and I'm like, no fucking shit, Sherlock. You ain't journaling. You're just working all the time, and you're seeking relief, and so I started thinking about that, and I started thinking like, okay, so this is what I need to plan for, because, you know, we're always going to have openings. And I can't just act like shithead every single time. And the other thing is like, now what do you want to do about it? The very next day, no matter how busy we were, <laughs> I seriously, my nails had gotten so long that I couldn't hardly type. My toenails were starting to 
hurt in my shoes because I had, it had been four weeks and I get the SNS, like it's basically like those fake acrylics and stuff. You cannot go four weeks without that shit getting taken care of without looking like a hot wreck. I finally just said, you're taking a two hour break. Just go. And I'm, and I know this sounds insane, but when you are someone who plans a lot and feels busy or whatever, to do some self-care in the middle of all of that, your brain screams, you're letting everyone down. What are they going to do while you're not there? Someone needs you. You're getting behind. All of that came up for me. That manicure and pedicure was not a fun experience. But what it was is I sat there through it and listened to what I tell myself about taking care of myself. And then I did work around that. Because I think that's a common problem for most of us. What most of us don't do is do our self-care and listen to that and let that just be the chatter. I promise you, the world didn't fall down or the world didn't burn. Nobody died or got pregnant during the two hours I was there, but I felt like it. And I learned from it. But that's, I mean, I think that's what we all need to do. We all need to sometimes, you know, just really evaluate, like, when we're drinking too much, when we're eating too much, when we're not exercising, when we're not even getting our manicures, when all the things that are like the red lights, they're all a signal that something underneath is not being met. And you figure that out, and you start giving it, and you start cleaning shit up. So I got up this morning, and I wanted to immediately get into my email, and I wanted to immediately get into the Facebook. I wanted to do it all. I got up this morning. I journaled. I got back into my routine. I start my day with journaling. I start my day with self-development. And that's I've done my day operating on what is best for me in this tribe versus what fires do I need to put out right now. And I think that's every woman. I think we get into the habit of going through our lives, putting out the fires, and we forget about the small steps, like they're not going to matter. My small step is journaling every morning. And when I lose my small step, everything starts unraveling around me. I start suddenly needing to, you know, like drink a little extra wine, eat a little doo-doo or whatever. And it's the same for all of us. You stop drinking your water. You don't take a walk. You don't write your food down and stuff. And then it all feels like it's all coming apart. When it just requires those little small steps to be put back into place to feel like there's some consistency, there's some foundation, and there's, you know, those things are just happening. Let's see. Can you have your bulletproof coffee anytime? If you want, I normally only drink mine in the morning because when I drink the MCT or the XT oil, the XCT oil, the brain octane that I drink, um, it gives me a lot of energy. So what I do in the afternoons, if I want a little hit, I usually just do my coffee with the heavy whipping cream or half and half. And I cut out the MCT oil in the afternoons. You can do the other stuff if you want, but I've just noticed me personally, I tend to, um, I'll get jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never go to bed. Uh, Australia, it's Wednesday, the future. <laughs> I told my husband last night, you're choosing to feel annoyed. The fact is the tea isn't cooked. Everything else is a drama you are creating about it. Uh, doing the free course and love it. Yes, uh, that's very true. I, I, tell my, I told my son this morning, I was talking about him and, his, uh, him, my, him and my husband did not get along very well this morning. And I was talking to my son about that concept, about, you know, his daddy, it, it, he was like, I think Spoonie was disappointed in me this morning. And I said, he may have been, but you get to decide when, you know, when your daddy is rolling his eyes and huffing and puffing, what that means. If you want, if you want to feel bad and think he's disappointed in you, that's your choice. You could also just think, Spoonie's having a tough morning, and that's okay. We talk all the time about um, choices and how we think and how we feel. I talk to him all the time about that. You know, my kid, he has autism, so it's super important for him to get that lesson because it doesn't come naturally to him. 
but I mean, he loves it. He loves this stuff. It's like thinking about how he thinks is the best gift I think we've ever given him because it allows him to really start understanding, you know, that his brain just processes stuff a little different. And it allows him to know that I actually do have control over this. Just because I don't think like everybody else doesn't mean that I don't have choice in how I think. Um, let's see. Should we also journal the time we eat our meals and snacks? Erica, I think you should. I think it's super important. Um, I, you know, I have my tribe members do that. I want you guys to do that if you're not. The main reason is because you will start noticing patterns of like when you like to eat. You know, a lot of times you'll start noticing that every day around three you eat. And you'll start saying, oh, I really wasn't even that hungry. And the only reason why you start noticing it is because you're putting down the time. So I definitely would put down what time. It doesn't have to be, you know, like to the hot second. But just knowing about what time you're eating is always valuable information. I am a, like, and I'm not a numbers girl, y'all. I mean, I'm really not. And I'm, uh, ask my, ask my team. I am not, um, like, all up into all the specifics and stuff. But I do like to know my data so that if I need it, it's there. I'm not one to get lost in data, but I'm definitely one who like loves to know that if I want to assess my week, I've got information. That's one of the things that, you know, that I don't like about last week is because I got out of the habit of journaling for my next opening. I don't have all my thoughts and feelings and all the crap that I was doing throughout the week. I had to just go back and re and like, recollect all I could and that's you know that I'm just I'm choosing to be happy with that because there's you know no other choice I can be pissed which I don't want to be pissed so I'm gonna have to choose to be happy but one of the things that would have been nice about just taking five minutes each day to download and stuff would have been I could have seen where my brain was going I could have seen a lot earlier where my my thoughts of not having enough time were creeping in all that kind of stuff I tend to, my team knows this, I tend, I, I can get a lot of shit done. And I also tend to put a lot on the plate. I, I, <laughs> but it would have taught me, was I creating drama or was I over planning some things? But because I didn't really watch it enough, you know, it's going to be my best guess. So I just think anytime you can get data is good. Uh, let's see. What I've found is if I journal, it holds me accountable if I slip up. It's right there in my face. Yeah, it does. It's one of your best accountability tools. A lot of times people say, like, I really need some accountability, so they want to hire someone. I'm like, why do you need to hire somebody? You do it. You can look at your journal, and you'll know real quick what you're doing. Just because somebody else is looking at it doesn't make you more accountable. You, you just think because somebody else is looking at it, you're more accountable. You could easily think that about yourself. My routinely, my routine is entirely upended this first week because I'm traveling for work. That's not an upend. That's a, that's a problem looking for a solution, Rebecca. These are high risk situations for me. Any tips for newbies trying to keep it together who are out of their element right out the gate? I think one of the things is you're dramatizing it. My best tip is to not make this a problem. Do not make this uh, be upended. Nothing like that's happened. You're traveling. Here's your facts. I'm traveling this week. I started a new program. That's it. You could easily be just going immediately into what parts of the program can I participate in this week? Make a list of those, put them on a piece of paper and go. Or you can be like, oh, I sure wish I could have started out perfect. If I'd been home, would have been a whole different story. Let's see what else we got going on here. This is so risky. In the past, these things have happened. Like, none of that's productive. So my best tip, Rebecca, is to notice when your brain is going there, and you're going to have to debate it and say, hey, the only thing that's going on is I'm traveling, and I've started a new program. What are the things from the new program I know I can do when I travel? Like, you don't need to be, I don't care if you're traveling at home, Wherever you can eat, you're two to two. You can start with, I don't eat until I'm hungry. And I, I always finish when I'm satisfied. That has nothing to do with traveling. That can be done at Cheesecake Factory. 
That can be done on your birthday. That can be done in a business trip. You don't have to know what they're serving. We all know what dessert looks like and a bread basket and shit food looks like. You can just say, hey, I don't eat the shit food this week. Done. I mean, seriously. But when our brain goes to, this is a problem, I'm upended, this is high risk. Like, do you see where we want to go? Like, this is the perfect situation for you. You're in the first week with brand new tools. You'll get to learn a lot about yourself. You could go into this week going, I'm going to get to learn a lot about myself. Or you can get to go into this week thinking, this is going to suck ass hard. I probably can't do it. Channel your brain where you want it to go. Channel your brain into thinking each day when you wake up, I really want you to think about what is it today that I know I could do that will get me one step closer to my goal? I can stop at a convenience store or the hotel lobby and buy a jug of water and fill that mess up. I know I can do that. Anything. Put your brain to work on what you can do. Don't put your brain to work so hard on how this is so wrong. Hey, Paula. Paula, I hope to God you saw that post I put in the newbie tribe. <laughs> Tribal address. You've got to dig that picture out. Just saying. Um, let's see. A lot of people did the free course. See, I'm telling you, that free course is the bomb. Uh, let's see. I see a lot of my friends coming in too. Hey, Elaine. Uh, I am seeking relief makes it all so much more doable. Yeah, I mean, I think that's such a key when we're wanting to overeat is thinking about what is it that we're actually looking for, right? Okay. Guys, I think that's it for questions today. Um, if you are listening and you want the free course, you go to pnp411.com. That's where you will get it. I'm telling you, it's great. It has four videos and a workbook. You can also, if you want to get on the wait list for our next opening, it will not be until New Year's, but you can go over to pnptribe.com and jump on the wait list. I have a couple of special emails that I send out for the wait list members um, that are a little bit different than what you would normally get. And if you want to listen to the podcast, if you like this, listen to the podcast. You can find it at Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat with me and my co-host, Kathy. And um, I will be back next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central. And if you're one of my newbies, I am fixing to hop over there and do a Q&A, just doing a pop-up because I have an extra 15 minutes. We might as well use them, right? <laughs> so I'm going to jump on over there. If you guys want to meet me in there, and if you are a tribal elder, then I will make sure to uh, save that recording and I will put it over into um, the Facebook group when they wrap. They're asking a lot of questions this week on the model and on the hunger scale. Talk to you later. Bye, y'all.